Hey, good morning, Facebook and Get Inspired Michiana. I'm Diane Bennett with Inspired Homes, and we are on Life Inspired. Our guest today is Matt Poorman, so mm -hmm. thanks for being here. Absolutely. We yeah. really appreciate yeah. it. Um, we always want to shout out to Daryl Buchanan because he's let us use his um, his song, We Have Jesus. So thanks for Daryl letting us use that. It features um, Tish Pittman and Janet Pittman, and you can download it from darylbuchanan.net, or it's also on iTunes. And I also want to say that, hey, we're streaming live on YouTube now too, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We we never did that before, so that's new. And um, we, I, I, I just have to thank TJ Twenty One Marketing Group because they're amazing and mm -hmm. put up with me. So, <laughs> but Matt, yeah. yes, has a great story to tell. I hope so. Yeah, because God's so, involved, right? There you like go. that's a, and that's a good story. what it's all about. That's so typically, it. if you're for, watching for the first time, um, we want to ask Matt his backstory to a dot 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 and then God kind of moment mm -hmm. that's got him on a new trajectory. Yeah. And and um, now he's walking inspired with a brand new church that just brand opened new church. for last Mother's Sunday. Day. Yeah. Right. Okay. Crazy. So tell us a little backstory before. Yeah. Yeah. Go. So uh, I'm kind of a native here of Mishawaka. Okay. So born here, uh, pretty much raised here, those kind of things. And so love the area. Great. Love being here. Um, this is home. You Good. Know? And um, had a good good shot. I went to Mishawaka High School. Mishawaka Yay. was a caveman. Okay, man. Uh, married a Penn <laughs> Kingsman. Not sure uh -oh. how that happened. Uh -oh. um, actually, I do know how that happened. It happened because of church. Oh, uh, cool. Those kind of things. But um, had had a great uh, uh, childhood for the most part. But uh, when I was in late high school, um, my dad uh, had a glass business, auto glass business, okay. and uh, the business went under. Okay, and, like windshields and that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, windshields and all that. Okay. And business went under and uh, had a hard time emotionally dealing with that. You were mad um, at God? Uh, I didn't. He did. Oh, he did. He did. And um, and so the, the, how he went to deal with that was through uh, just kind of uh, loneliness mm -hmm. and uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so uh, his began to drink a lot. Okay. A lot. And um, at one point... Um, my, uh, he was literally drinking every night, mm -hmm. every night, mm -hmm. uh, staying out in his garage, coming home, going to sleep, getting up, going to work. Just, it's just, just this pattern over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I remember, uh, one night my mom, uh, had taken my sister off to college and um, getting her all settled in her freshman year. Mm -hmm. And I came home and my dad came in, uh, very, very drunk. And um, was very angry about something that was really min minimal. Nothing. And it's just the two of you at home. Uh, it was my twin brother and I. Okay. Um, and my older brother at that point had moved out of the house, and okay. so uh, my twin brother and I. We were in the uh, upstairs. I remember very, very vividly being upstairs. Um, Dad came home into the house, very upset, very angry, um, and started actually. He uh, there were by our glass door there were um, mugs hung on the wall, and he began to be mad enough that he grabbed those and he started to throw those mugs at us. Um, and I, um, I grabbed the only thing that was close by was a, a baseball bat and uh, I was this close to actually hitting my dad with a baseball bat. Wow. Um, that was a tough night. Yeah. Tough night. And so, uh, dropped that, um, said, Hey Mike, we're out of here. We're going, uh, went to my, uh, friend's house and spent the night, those kind of things. And so that just started this, this season, this weird season and of what grade were you at this time? Uh, it would have been probably my junior or senior year of high school. Okay. And, uh. So pretty pivotal time in a young man's life. Right, for sure. Um, and to see your dad go through all that and, and to not know how to handle that and those kind of things. So uh, go off to college, uh, dealing with all that and the emotions of all that. Parents are getting divorced and all those kinds of things. There's lots going on. Um, but um, but really, uh, then the one summer, uh, got got a phone call. I was working uh, for the summer and got a phone call and said, um, hey, a family emergency. My dad had collapsed. Uh, here in South Bend uh, on the side of the road. He was, he was like 80, 90 pounds um, oh, wow. because he was doing nothing but consuming alcohol. Um, and so uh, ran home and uh, he now has uh, actually lived in a nursing home for the last, uh, what, 20, 20 some years, wow. um, 25 years. Uh, he has what they call alcohol dementia. Uh, and so he has no short term memory. And so he can't care for himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so bring this all back to back now though. Um, I'm now the acting legal guardian for my dad. Wow. 
Um, and some people, uh, you know, it's kind of a cool story just in the fact that like, even though this was really rough and whatever, I now have an opportunity to care for somebody who didn't at that time care for me, but I, which I think is a kind of a cool God thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So I, I tell you that part of the story because I think that that kind of sets up a little bit of, um, where God intersected my life, uh, in the middle of all that. Okay. So, um, anybody would have to go through all that stuff. That's a, that's a tough situation, tough, right. tough circumstance. Right. Um, but uh, in the middle of that, when I was in high school, um, I actually also was in uh, two car accidents within one night, uh, within five minutes of each other, my freshman year of high school. So this is before this? This is before this. Okay. So, um, so I couldn't have gone through all of that stuff if this previously wouldn't have happened to okay. me. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a weird circumstance, went on a mission trip. Uh, to Kentucky okay. and got back. We all came back, on a, came back on a Saturday. We had to go back to school on Mondays. So we're like, hey, we're all gonna hang out. It's our last night before we go to, back to school, those kind of things. And, uh, and we uh, g went down on US-6. If you know US-6, it's Amish country. And okay. so there's no lights and those kind of things. Right. And so um, there were two cars following each other. And uh, I was in the front car, um, my brothers and, and were in the back car and they, uh, it was kind of crazy. I was actually look. There's the vivid things you remember, right, you know. Right. I remember looking up and it's clear night, beautiful outside, and stars. I remember looking at the Big Dipper. And you were the driver, or you I'm, the I'm the passenger seat. Okay. And and I look up and I'm just looking at the Big Dipper, beautiful night. And one of the, the girl who was driving said, you know, I, I hit a deer here last week, and I was like, well, don't hit anything tonight, you know, those kind of things. Well, we go around this big curve, and a, a jeep comes by and has this, the KC lights on, and it's got uh, brights on. It blinds her and she accidentally veers off the side of the road. What you're supposed to do in that time is you're supposed to slow down, ease back on the road. Well, she panicked and she jerked the wheel to the left uh, to get back on the road and we spin, spun in the uh, road, flipped in and out of a ditch, hit on my side first. And uh, luckily we ran, ran, ran through a fence, crossed over the center line. Luckily we landed on our wheels. And of course, my brother was following. So it was Amish country, no lights, those kind of things. So he pulled his car over. He's like, uh, oh my gosh, my brother. Right, exactly. So um, so he pulls over, figures that, like tries to assess the situation, those kind of things. Tries to get people to stop, nobody will stop. Oh um, my gosh. And so he was like, okay, uh, I'm gonna put, uh, I was hurt. I actually had a, uh, got a laceration in the back of my head and one of the other girls hurt her knee. And so uh, he said, I'm gonna put Matt and Kylie in the car. Uh, I'm gonna send the cops back for all of you guys, uh, those kind of things. So. We sit down, uh, my twin brother helps me get in the car, we sit down, and uh, as soon as we sit down, a 77 year old lady comes, comes by and hits my, my brother's car, sends it spinning into the ditch. And at that point, I hadn't had a chance to put a seatbelt on, so my body spun so hard because of the impact that, I don't know if you can see these scars on my eye. Oh my gosh, um, wow. But my head went through the quarter glass of my brother's car. And so, uh, very, very, um, you know, very traumatic, you know, right. very hard night. Right. And uh, so two, uh, two accidents in five minutes. And so. Um, but he wasn't even driving. He just got he hit. Had, yeah. yeah. You just got in the yeah. car and got hit. Yeah. So, praise God you're in the car and not outside the car. car. Right. Exactly. Um, so this is where the, the God part comes in is that I, I remember because I got out of the car and I felt my eye and I was like, this is not good. So I laid down by the grace of God off duty, off duty EMT came by the scene. Uh, got us all the help we need. And I remember vividly my brother standing over, grabbing me in my shirt and said, Matt, you can't die on me. Because we didn't, I mean, head injuries, they bleed a lot. You know, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah, you're right. And so we didn't know what the extent was. I'm like, Ryan, right. I'm, I'm fine. God's here. And You knew that. You I just knew, knew that. I knew it. And I, I have to this day never felt the presence of God like I felt that night. Like there was just in the midst, midst of chaos, because this is God, right? Right. In the midst of what is chaos, he can be the constant. Mm -hmm. He can be the the solid foundation and in that moment i was like okay there's some pain there's some things going on but but god is here and um, the police officers said after the fact that i should have died in both car accidents um and that that does something to you when you go you shouldn't be alive but right. somehow miraculously you're alive and so at that point i knew um that there was more to this life than what i was living mm -hmm. there was more to to i was meant for something you said Yes, I he grabbed me. Yeah, yeah, grabbed me, and so there was there was much more to that, and so uh, at that point, that is when I committed my life to Christ and said, "Okay, Jesus, I'm all in. I am all in. This is what you want me what to do." What did it do to Ryan? 
Was he just like, wow? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it was interesting that because uh, I have four siblings, so there's four of us. So there's my twin brother and I, and my my sister, who's only 11 months older than my twin brother and I. Okay. Uh, my mom had her in January of 1980, and my brother and I in December of 1980. Nice. So the fact that she's still sane, <laughs> I have no idea how mom. that. <laughs> After Mother's Day. Hell yeah, right. Um, and so it was interesting as we kind of all navigated this life with my dad and this life with, uh, whoa, Matt could have died. Uh, my twin brother and I both just said, Jesus has got a plan, like we're in. Um, and my, my brother and sister kind of, uh, for a season, we're kind of not sure what they were going to do, but it's kind of cool now that we kind of all are coming back to this, this realization of there's a God who wants us to go in one direction and we need to go that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of all took our own paths to get there, but we're all kind of walking that direction, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I mean, at that point, when, when you give your life to Jesus and you have a trajectory, then, then there's no longer the decisions are yours, right? right. They're his. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, I, I was at the pivotal point then after all this stuff happened with my dad of, okay, now what do I do? What's the next step after high school? Right, right, right. right, right. And so, uh, went off to Taylor university okay. in Upland, Indiana and got okay. a mass communications degree, bachelor of uh, arts degree in mass communications. And, um, <laughs> my first summer uh, after I have a, had a really great friend, uh, Rich Blackburn, uh, who was a youth pastor in Kokomo, Indiana. I went and visited him on, uh, I don't remember if it was, I think it was right before Christmas break. And essentially he was like, hey, I know what God's will is for your life. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like, well, well, tell me. Yeah. Tell me, right? How'd you hear about it and right. tell me? <laughs> That's right. Okay. So he, uh, he was working for Spring Hill Camps. Oh, great. And he said, I pretty much know that you're you and your brother and the ways that God has wired you, you need to be at summer camp this summer. You need to be a counselor. So he showed us eight videos, <laughs> a lot of videos and said, uh, really, I want to. And so we, we were just passing through, going to visit with him. He goes, no, you guys are staying overnight. I'm going to take you down to camp tomorrow. You're going to interview for a job. I mean, this guy was, he was, he was He's like, like, this is it. God told me you're coming. That's right. <laughs> so we, and we did, we went the next day, went, got, got interviewed, got hired for the summer right away. Um, and it was just, it was just, there was just a, okay, uh, okay. I just, there was just, this, once, once you start a relationship with Jesus, like sometimes there's just these things that go, yeah, okay, this makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. So we did that. So I spent my first summer as a counselor, uh, second summer as an area director, and then I did my internship there as well, the third summer. Um, but that started a trajectory towards ministry. Right. So all these, these layers, right? You have this, uh, this accident who really started this relationship, went through this really tough time. Not sure I could have gone through it without Jesus. Right, for sure. Uh, pushed me into a Christian uh, college. And then, this leads to the church. Then to the ministry, right? So I uh, knew that ministry was... Uh, what I wanted to do. And so uh, Taylor University, I studied mass communication. So there's just a video element. Like I wanted to be creative and do videos and, but I want to do ministry. Where can I do videos and ministry together at camp? Okay. Okay. I'll do camp. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so then at that point I, um, you know, just uh, got married and, and after we got married, just said, okay, I'm going to start applying for camps. Ended up working at a camp up in Berrien Springs, Michigan called Five Pines Ministries, which is a lot of people know because they do like this big tubing Go hill Five thing, Pines, Five Pines Ministries. Okay. Uh, so that was my first job in ministry. Then went to Epworth Forest Conference Center in uh, North Webster, Indiana. I was there for a couple of years. And then uh, Mark Pope, who's the lead pastor at Vineyard Mishawaka here mm -hmm. in Mishawaka, mm -hmm. uh, came to me. At that time, Lee and I were attending the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, hey, we need somebody to take on student ministries at the church you seem to keep coming to the top of the pile. Like, what do you think about this? And I said, um, yeah, let's keep talking. And so, uh, at that point I, I came on staff at the church was there. I've been on, I was on staff there almost 10 years. Wow. Uh, I was a student pastor, uh, and then, um, started out, um, uh, there and then went, I was the, the campus pastor at the Grape Road campus on, on, on Grape oh, Road. Cool. Okay. I did that for three years. And uh, all that said, uh, so if you want the, more of the, the dot, 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 it was one of those things where um, when we started the campus, um, I told Mark, I said, I don't really know what God's doing, but it feels like something is moving, something is changing, and I'm supposed to be the guy to go do it. And, and so he, uh, we kept the conversation going, and then he had this dream. That God marked was, it. Marked it. Okay. That uh, we were supposed to, as a church, send out five new things, five new initiatives from our church in five years. And I said, that's it. That's, that's the thing. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what God's been stirring in me for like the last several months. Um, and so we launched uh, Grape Road Campus. Um, but we knew, uh, God told me, uh, 
that I was on a, what was, what he kind of labeled in my head was a Stephen to Peter journey. If you know the story of Stephen, essentially this, the ministry of the disciples was getting uh, too large. They weren't able to get everything done. Mm -hmm. So they had to bring in some other people and kind of go, okay, we, let's spread out a little bit. And let's you go do this and mm -hmm. we'll go do that. And, and so that's where we were as a church at the Vineyard Mishawaka. We were at a place where um, man, we were having standing room only services. There mm -hmm. were, just there wasn't enough room. And we, the kingdom of God is invitation focused, you know. So it's, we want to invite people in. And so it's hard when you go, we don't have room for people. So we knew we had to send something out. And uh, so I knew that I, I had to do this Stephen thing. I had to mm -hmm. kind of be sent out a little bit. I had to do this Grape Road, Grape Road Campus thing. But he also said, but um, you're on a Stephen to Peter journey. And Peter was the rock. Mm -hmm. He was the first pastor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he goes, Matt, you're, this is just training ground for you to be a lead pastor. Got it. And uh, so I didn't know the timing specifically of that or whatever I said, but I knew it was at least three years because Peter needed three years with Jesus to be ready cool. to be the rock. Okay. And uh, when we announced to the church that we were planting Cornerstone Vineyard Church, uh, it had been officially three years exactly that I'd been the campus wow. pastor. Uh, at Grape Road Campus. So God knew what he was doing right, in the midst of that. Right, so, right. Um, so yeah, so there's just, uh, God, God has uh, intersected and, and in some senses I don't feel super equipped to do it, um, but you just follow God, you know, yeah. follow what he's okay, doing. And those kind of, yeah, that's it's right. bigger than me. That's but, right. Okay, so Cornerstone Vineyard is yeah. the name of the church. Yep. And where do you guys meet? We are meeting at Moran Elementary School in uh, Osceola on Beach Road. Okay, and you meet on Sunday mornings? Sunday mornings, uh, 9 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Okay. So. And you had a great first turnout on Mother's Day last week. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Uh, more than I would have ever anticipated. So 375 people wow. showed up at church. Uh, and we had five. And so you're in like the lunchroom auditorium kind of room? Yeah, they have a great little auditorium right off the front door there. Okay. And so we're in there and then our kids are uh, in a couple different places in, in the building and cafeteria okay. and all that kind of okay. stuff and whatever. So okay. it works out really, really well. And, uh, but, and then I was just blown away, not only by the, the amount of people, but... Uh, a lot of joy, a lot of yeah. excitement going on. Yeah. Uh, we had enough parking spots for everybody, so Praise that's good God. too. Um, but we also had five people raise their hand and say yes to Jesus, oh, awesome. uh, either commitment or recommitment to Christ. And, uh, and that's why we're doing it. Right. Um, we're, we're doing that because we want to see the kingdom expanded. Um, and our, our tagline at Cornerstone is where relationship is at our core. I am, I am convinced more than ever in my ministry, I've been doing ministry now 16 years, uh, church ministry for 10 we are living in a relationally bankrupt society. Right? Um, let me be on my phone. Right. And they're probably on their phone watching this <laughs> right now. Right. Sorry. <laughs> and so, uh, and it is a lot of that. And, and there's this authentic people desire to be known. We have this innate thing in us to know and be known mm -hmm. and, and we're missing it in our culture. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, felt like God gave me this vision of a church that where relationship is at our core relationship with Jesus first, Mm -hmm. relationship with each other mm -hmm. and relationship with our community. If mm -hmm. we're doing relationship well in those three areas, we, we won't fail. Mm -hmm. And so we're, that's, that's our focus. And that's what we're really trying to, trying to awesome. really kind of hammer in uh, and live out because it's the way Jesus did it. And some right. sense, even when he called the disciples, Jesus called the disciples. He said, he went down to the water and said, Hey guys, do you want to come? There was an invitation. All they had to do was say yes. How cool is that? Yeah. And that's how it is. And so like, then he did life with them and he spent time with them and he invested in them. And, and, uh, people at Cornerstone know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm just relational. I like, I like people. Right. And so, uh, I tell them all the time, if you're not at church, I'll know. Um, and they're like, how do you know? Like, do you have like, like people who watch if you're at church? And I'm like, no, just cause I care about you and I want you to be cared for, um, in, in the process. And so we're just really trying to, awesome. to get people into that, uh, cool. that, that community. Awesome. Church, so. All right. Well, we have lots of different watchers that yeah. might want to connect with you for yeah. coffee. They want to yes. relate, relate with you, yes. whatever, for coffee or something like that. Um, so I can think of young men or women who mm -hmm. want to go into ministry might have questions for you. Yeah. Um, adults, children, teens, whatever, that might want to find out about Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So whatever kinds of questions you have, uh, messages here. We'll put you in contact with Matt. And, um, I and that. I heard several times you kept saying, I heard from God, I heard from God. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay inspired every week? Yeah. Briefly. Oh man. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, well, I will tell you this. Uh, I just had a conversation last night with some folks, uh, that I was meeting with and we have got to connect to the word of God. I think that I know there's a culture right now that says the word of God is the Bible is an ancient book, man. It is the breathing living word of the creator of the universe. We've got to get into the word of God. So reading the scriptures. Being, I tell people, say, you come to church every week, you get into a small group and you serve somewhere uh, and you're in the Bible, man, you're going to get inspired. Um, okay. It's because that's where the Holy Spirit thrives in those things, awesome. you know, so awesome. Great. I, 
can, that, I'm convinced that's the way to do it and to do it through the uh, mechanism and conduit of relationship. Great, so. awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. Absolutely. Thanks for watching Facebook. If you know somebody else that needs to be on the Red Couch, you can message us that too. Thanks, you all have a great weekend. Bye. Yes, yes, we have. We have Jesus. From a spirit in heaven.